What's up everyone and welcome back into another video of custom rooms and today it's time for reviewing the 3.12 I mean the latest update of project elixir so I'll be talking about everything starting from the software to its cons so make sure to watch the video till the end and my name is Priyanshu you are watching Topia TV previously known as Max Tricks and now let's get the video started. So starting with the software so obviously it comes on Android 13 and for the security patch so you get the security patch of 5th September 2023 and for the kernel you get the stock kernel so yeah the software part is sorted out. Now moving into the home screen so for the launcher you get the elixir launcher which is based on the pixel launcher so when you open the wallpaper and style settings and select the change wallpaper option you get a lot of pre-included wallpapers and moving back you also get various theming styles for your system features like themed icons and even you can customize the app grid size for your icon so yeah that's nice. Moving into the launcher settings so when you move into the icons tab you can change your app icon according to your choice from this option and moving back you can also customize the icon size, font size and even you get features like forced themed icons which generate themed icons for those apps which don't have one. In the home screen settings you get features like wallpaper scrolling and moving down you can also customize the radius of your google search bar so yeah that's nice. Other than this you also get many features which I'm not gonna cover cause the video is gonna get very long so yeah that's all for the launcher features. Now talking about the pre-installed apps so as is the google apps build so you get the google play store along with some other google apps pre-installed. And for the dialer, so you get the modded Google dialer by which you can record calls of the other person without letting him know that the call is being recorded. Other than this, you also get the MIUI camera by which you can take videos up to 1080p 30fps and last but not the least, you also get the Dolby Atmos pre-included. So yeah, that's nice. So now talking about the customizations, so when you move into the settings, you get a tab called Essence. Sounds good. So when you open it, as you can clearly see, you get a lot of customizations. So firstly, moving into the themes option, you can set custom themes and by the way, this features works on dark mode, so note that. Moving down, you also get a lot of font styles for your system, which is nice. And apart from this, you also get various icon packs, like right now I've set mine one on the default. And now if I select the grid icon pack, the icon gets totally changed. Now you also get different brightness slider styles like I have set mine one on the default which looks absolutely boring but if I select the new morph style the slider looks way refreshing. Apart from this you also get various data icon styles change the app icon style and even you get various Wi-Fi and signal icon style like if I select the window style it looks really cool. Now moving into the lock screen settings, you get features like edge light for your notifications and you also get some customizations regarding the media cover art. Apart from this, you also get two different screen lock animations, so yeah, that's it. Moving into the status bar settings, you get features for your status bar clock like the background chip. So when you click on the option, you get various clock styles like if I select the new morph gradient style, the clock in my status bar applies the design and moving down you also get various font style for your status bar clock so yeah that's kind of nice. Moving down you can also customize the battery styles like right now I've set mine one on the default and now if I select the landscape iOS 16 the battery icon in my status bar applies the design and in fact you can also set whether you want to keep your percentage of your battery hidden or visible. Now moving into the quick settings, you get features for your QS panel. So firstly, when you open the QS customization tab, you can change the QS styles like right now I've set mine one on the default, which looks absolutely boring. So now if I select the outline style, as you can see the QS styles gets changed, which looks great. Apart from this, you also get various QS header images. I mean, you get 75 different QS header image presets for your QS panel that looks absolutely great. But when you move down, you can set your own QS header image like you just need to select your local image from this option and just select the photo which you want to apply. 
and you can clearly see that the image gets applied into the kiosk panel and by the way if you want to know my opinion so you should definitely use the settings like the height opacity and the fade level to get the best results for your QS header image. So I really loved this feature. Moving back you can also customize the QS clock size like you can increase or decrease the font size value of your clock and moving down you can also change the QS panel background transparency and even you can display the data usage on the bottom of your QS panel from this option. Now moving into the miscellaneous settings so you get the advanced restart features like when you open the power menu you can directly boot into your recovery or bootloader from here. Moving down you also get features like parallel space where you can clone your apps and accounts which is a really helpful feature if you are into some kind of business and apart from this you also get gaming features like unlock higher FPS in games by which you can unlock the highest FPS settings of your games like PUBG and moreover you also get features like game space to enhance your gaming experience and display the live FPS of the game. So yeah, that's really amazing. And now moving into the security settings, when you open the more security option, you also get features for your app lock. So that's all for the customizations and now let's talk about the performance. Now talking about the performance, so for N22 I got a score of about 462k and even during the CPU throttle test, the CPU throttled to 85% of its max performance which is considerable. Now if I talk about the gaming performance, so I played VGMI for this test under smooth plus extreme graphics settings and let me tell you that the gaming performance was outstanding. I mean for the TDM matches I got around 59 FPS consistently without any frame drops and for the classic matches the frames were consistently maintained between 55 to 60 FPS so the gaming performance is also outstanding even if I consider long gaming sessions. So for 5G, so yeah, 5G works fine without any problem as you can check the speeds out. So yeah, that's for 5G. Talking about the battery backup, so I got around 7 to 8 hours of battery backup on heavy usage and for normal usage you can consider 9 plus hours. So the shout out for this room goes to Ashish Jaiswal, nice job bro, appreciate your work. Now if I talk about the cons, so there are none except for some very minor lags which I faced in the QS panel but I think it's regarding the launcher cause when I used Nova launcher I got no lags so some optimizations should be made to reduce the lags and other than this I have no issues. So now here lies my conclusion. So if you are looking for a room with amazing features and stability along with ultimate gaming performance and good battery life then you should definitely consider this room. So for the flashing process, you will need the AOSP recovery and I have also made a video on how to flash these rooms. So make sure to check all the links in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to like it, share it with your friends and most importantly sub to our channel. So goodbye and take care.